This Kelloland Living segment is sponsored by JJ's Wine, Spirits, and Cigars, an enhanced adult beverage experience in Sioux Falls. Every now and then, an event happens in our lives that completely redirects what we thought was our life's path. That was certainly true for today's Across the Table guest. Lindsay Harris knew she wanted to be a lawyer for as long as she can remember. Yet a life-changing event occurred when she was a senior in high school that prompted her to change the kind of attorney she wanted to become. She shared the story with me recently at JJ's Wine, Spirits, and Cigars. Lindsay Harris, cheers to you. I can't think of anything better than sitting down to drink with you and have great conversation. This is your go-to. It is my go-to. Grey Goose Martini, three olives. Three, very specific. It's all about the salt intake. Tell me about what you do and why you do it. Well, why I do what I do is, uh, it's a good story. So I, from the time I was a little girl, I always knew I was gonna be an attorney. Now, I didn't have an attorney in my family. I wasn't raised by attorneys. I didn't know an attorney, um, but I was just gonna be an attorney. Um, so growing up, I, I mean, that's the answer I gave when I was four years old. Um, entered my senior year of high school and my dad passed away unexpectedly. It was a really hard time for my family. I kind of got to see what happens when you don't have good planning put into place. Um, and he was young, he was 38 years old. But I always thought, gosh, there's got to be a better way. There's got to be a better way to help families through this. There's got to be things you can do. Um, so it really motivated a passion in me to help everyday families, um, business owners, farmers, and making sure that they don't go through what my family did. And there is a plan and there's a way to do it. So now I opened up my own firm. So I own Harris Law & Co. in town. And we do wills, trusts, and LLCs. So every day I get to sit down with families um, and really cut through chaos for them and make sure they have a good roadmap. And you get to sit down and with your own experience help them avoid those mistakes, which that means something. I think it's a, it's a really unique perspective that I, that I have after going through it. Even at such a young age, um, I was always a, a little adult, so still got put in charge of a lot. And my family, I had two little brothers and my mom, and we all got through it by leaning on each other. But yeah, every day now I get, I get to share my own story. And it's a whole different passion um, than I think uh, other people in my field have, you know, that grew up with attorneys. And, and they're great attorneys, but it's just a different background. That's not something you would wish anybody to have to deal with, but the exponential good that's come out of you going into this field and being able to help other people avoid that same problem, that is very special. There's so many myths out there, so many misconceptions, and people are always like, oh yeah, I got that taken care of. I have, you know, that three-page will sitting at home, which if you're in my field, I about have a heart attack and go like this. <laughs> Um, well, well I'm, I'm gonna have a chat after this. <laughs> <laughs> I commend people for at least having something in place that's actually a lot more than a lot of people. Um, but a lot of times what we don't realize, you know, the, the biggest misconception is people think a will means that they'll avoid the probate process so their families won't have to go through court. And, and it's the exact opposite. If your will controls anything, you will go through probate court. So, you know. You're just it, there to make it better for them and un end a lot of those mis misconceptions. What's harder, becoming an attorney, being an attorney, or owning your own business? You know, the owning the, my own business was never, uh, wasn't originally part of the plan. Um, I always just, I love what I do so much that I just wanted to find a home to do it that way. But I kept uh, running into to different roadblocks. You know, there's this traditional view of what lawyers are and what law firms are. And I really wanted to do things differently and really take it from a client-centered approach. Um, be really straightforward with my clients and I just couldn't find a way to do it so I opened my own firm to do it and we do we run we just run things a little bit differently and our clients walk in and the comment we get all the time is they just instantly relax their shoulders go down they're like oh you know, it's really nice in here you don't have a single law book and I was like nope and you won't see my degrees on the wall either <laughs> um, and nothing against that you know it's everyone has their own styles but it really helps me um, connect with my clients a little differently they just feel at home you're dealing in wills and estates and trusts and, and essentially people's legacies. So what do you want your legacy to be? One of the, the greatest thing about being part of this community is it is a community. Um, and I, I always w have donated my time um, and my talents elsewhere. And my firm has really allowed me to do that even, even more. 
Uh, I work with Habitat for Humanity, so I served as their president for the last two years. I'm past president now. Um, I've been involved in the organization for a long time, and I love their mission. You know, it's, uh, hey, we don't give away homes for free. That's another myth. Right. Um, but it's a helping hand. So, you know, we have people who learn how to pay for their mortgages, that build their houses, that take education classes. Um, so when I'm not giving them my legal brain, they, they do let me swing a hammer every once in a while. So I have learned some actual t hammering techniques. <laughs> so <laughs> hammering just, techniques. Hammering techniques. That's a whole other segment. <laughs> <They exist. laughs> okay. Yeah, so apparently it's not the wrist, so you got to avoid the rest. Okay. <laughs> but yeah, it's, a, it's been a great organization to be involved with in our community, and I hope to continue to be involved in a lot of different charitable organizations around town. And I can see the connection there because you're building a family's ability to to maintain in their future and their legacy but and then building a home with a family who's taking control over over their life too right so that has so many parallels i can see why you're so passionate about it yeah it's it's you give a families um homes and we don't we just think of them as houses sometimes and it's stability you know it's a different way it's a different life it's a different way for their children to grow up and the statistics when you look into habitat and what having that home ownership does for a family generations down the road had a little girl once uh, run in to her new home on a home celebration day and she puts her shoes takes her little shoes off and puts them by the door and everyone's waiting behind her but you, you have to wait. wait and she runs in and she's like this is my bedroom and just she was just tears and she's four it was incredible. I mean, it's just incredible to see the effect Habitat for Humanity has in our community and the different businesses, um, my business among them, that are yeah. able to support. I love that you brought up the exponential, like, generational wealth that having a home gives you because, again, in what you're dealing with, you see the impact of that at a different scale, too. Yeah. What keeps you up at night? What keeps me up at night? Oh, wanting to do more. So sometimes I get asked, a lot of people are like, how do you do everything you do? And I was like, well, I'm still trying to figure out how to do more. Um, owning my own business has been one facet of, of it, being able to help my community members just by doing what I do. Um, and other charitable organizations, I still feel like there's just never enough time to have an impact on the world that I really want to. So once I figure out that trick, I tell you, it's good. <laughs> Will you tell me one last question? Will you be my best friend? I just Always. love everything you just said. Okay. <laughs> Cheers to you, Lindsay Harris. I love everything you're doing, and I want to come out and do a Habitat build with you. Let's do it. Let's Absolutely. Do it. That'll be the next step. Thank you so much. Thank you. At JJ's, they like to say they provide an enhanced adult beverage experience. We think that's just perfect to sum up the great food and drinks and the great people you'll run into at JJ's Wine, Spirits, and Cigars. They're located at 3000 West 57th Street in Sioux Falls. You can find out more about their specials and events by checking out their website at jjswine.com. And desserts are back from the Boozy Bakery. Check out the Boozy Bakery and JJ's Wine, Spirits, and Cigars online to see what is available for takeout or to have right in JJ's bar. If you are interested in ordering food from the Boozy Bakery kitchen for carryout or curbside delivery, please visit the Boozy Bakery at jjswine.com and click on the Boozy Bakery tab, then to go to order online.